Leader's Guide to E-Performance, the Individual Performance Plan. To open a performance document, you should navigate to your employee documents using the steps in the navigating to your current document module. To get started, you will select an employee. On this screen, you will see information about your employee's document. Document type, this may say annual, flex, or probation. Document status, document begin and end dates, and the due date for the current step. Helpful tips. If you have more than one current document for an, any employee, you should notify your agency's PM coordinator. If you have current documents for employees you no longer supervise, you should notify your agency's PM coordinator. Once inside the document, you should notice a steps and task pane on the left side of the page. This is visible throughout the cycle. The steps and task pane is a quick and easy way to determine the stage and step of your performance document. All stages and steps of the performance document cycle are displayed. In this screenshot, this document is in the individual performance plan stage at the update step. The status circle to the individual performance plan indicates the status of the step. Green with check mark, stage step has been completed. Orange, stage step is in progress. Or no color, stage step has not started. The document header will contain information such as the employee name, manager name, document type, document status, period dates, document ID, and due date. The due date field will display the next due date for this document. Be sure to save your document often. If the document was successfully saved, you will see a green saved banner at the top of the window. Notice the three, the three tabs, goals, outcomes, and competencies. You will use these tabs to review, complete, or update information as necessary throughout the cycle. If you need to provide additional documentation regarding your employee's performance, you may add an attachment. Attachments may be added prior to the completion of a step. Throughout the performance cycle, to add an attachment, click on the Add Attachments link and follow the prompts. To begin creating the IPP, click the Goals tab. Goals may include governor's priorities and or agency-specific strategic and operational goals. These were selected by your agency. To add a goal, select the Add Agency Strategic and Operational Goal link. On this page, you would select Search. A list of available goals will be displayed under Search Results. Select all goals required for this document. Each work outcome statement will support one of the selected goals. On this screen, you will see your selected goals. This screenshot displayed the goals selected. If additional goals are required, select Add. If a goal is not required or selected an error, Use the trash icon to delete the desired goal. Goals can only be added and or deleted during the IPP stage.
Once you have added all goals, select the Work Outcomes tab. Three work outcome statements are populated. However, each employee is required to have four to six outcome statements that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time sensitive. To add additional work outcome statements, select the Add Work Outcome Statements link. Work outcomes weigh 70% of the overall performance rating. If you have questions or need additional information, please click the here link to connect to the DOHR performance management website for valuable information on all parts of the performance evaluation process. Select the expand collapse button to expand work outcome statement one. Select the pencil icon to enter a smart work outcome statement. You would need to repeat these steps for all work outcome statements in this performance document. A helpful tip. Document your smart work outcomes in a Word document first in the event your work does not save or is inadvertently deleted. You can then copy and paste them here. For each work outcome section, you will enter a title, smart work outcome statement, action steps, and weight. The weight of all work outcome statements must total 100%. Each work outcome statement must support a governance priority or an agency specific or operational goal. Click on the drop down button to select a goal the work outcome statement will support. Then click update. You should see this screen when all details have been entered. Click on the Competencies tab. Under the Competencies tab, click Add Competencies and Behaviors for the search page to display. After the search page displays, you will need to select your agency from the drop down menu. Once you have selected your agency, select the employee role. There will be three options available for the employee role, individual contributor, manager, influencer, and executive. If you are unsure of the roles, the role to select, please contact your agency's human resource office. Then click search. Once the search is complete, you will be prompted to select your agency's identified competencies for that employee role to be added to the performance document. Be sure to select all. If you are unsure of the competencies, please contact your agency's human resource office. Be sure to save the selected competencies by clicking Save Selected Competency. A helpful tip, all employees must have three competencies. In the event you select the incorrect competencies and behaviors, you can remove them in the same section under the competencies tab. Click the delete icon when prompted select yes, delete, and the competency will be removed from the performance document.
helpful tip. You will only be able to add or delete competencies during the IPP step. Once you have deleted, once you have completed the IPP, you will not be able to make additional changes. When you have entered all work outcome statements and selected all goals and competencies, click the notify button. This step will only be required during the IPP, but available as an option for both interim reviews. This will open a new window to compose an email message. The employee's email address will automatically populate to the to field. You may add additional email addresses in this field using a semicolon to separate the e email addresses, i.e. john.smith at tn.gov and jamie.johnson at tn.gov. This will notify the employee and reviewer when the document is ready for your review. <clears throat> Enter your message and click send. If an employee does not have an email address, you may still send a notification to the reviewer. However, it is your responsibility to ensure the employee receives written or verbal communication to review and acknowledge their IPP. Helpful tips. Be sure to save your document often. If the document was, uh, was successfully saved, you will see a green saved banner at the top of the window. You must click the notify button. This will be the only system generated notification the employee will receive to review their document. This information does not replace the required discussion with your employee. And lastly, formal reviewer approval is not required. However, Prior to discussion with the employee, you must discuss the IPP with the reviewer to ensure alignment with agency goals. Your agency human resource office can provide further guidance. Thank you for viewing the Manager's Guide to ePerformance, the Individual Performance Plan.